Okay, in this example, we are going to look at a question from Winter 19, Paper 4 2. All right, and uh, it talks about kinetic theory, Brownian motion, and basically what we've learned in uh, the subtopic of 10.2. So let's read the question. A smoke particle, smoke particles are suspended in still air, and we have Brownian motion of the smoke particles is seen through a microscope. Describe what is seen in the microscope. So in order to do that, uh, we are going to recall the keywords. For example, we will have this uh, haphazard movement. So you can see that specks of light moves or moving haphazardly because they, you know, zip around in random motion. Okay, how Brownian motion, second part, provides evidence for the nature of the movement of gas molecules. Okay, so the smoke particles will collide with the gas molecules, causing the smoke particle to change direction. That's why you see that haphazard motion or random motion. I guess you could also put random motion. Okay, so I will write that out in the sentence first. Okay, that would be the first point. Gas molecule collides with the smoke particle, causing the smoke particles to change direction. And, and your smoke particle is moving in random direction, random motion. So the gas molecules also move in random motion as well. So this part, right, when we say specks of light, this is the actual thing that you observe. You don't actually get to see the smoke particle too. What you are seeing is the light that is reflecting off the surface of the smoke particle. Okay, so this is Brownian motion. The whole idea of Brownian motion is that we can see smoke particles traveling haphazardly. And because of this, we can say that because the smoke particle collide with gas molecule, if smoke particle move haphazardly or randomly, then gas molecules also move in the same fashion. All right, so let's look at part B. Part B seems like a state change question. Right, so you have a fixed mass of ideal gas, and this is your volume pressure. So they very nicely put in the books for you. Okay, very good. Okay, the gas is heated at constant volume, so this is an important point. Until the temperature is 310 Kelvin at a higher pressure. Okay, the quantity of thermal energy required to raise the temperature of one mole of the gas by one Kelvin at constant volume is 12.5 joule. So if you have already started your studies in chapter 11, which is a bit weird, we have this thing called specific heat capacity. But that is specific heat capacity for a unit mass. And sometimes when it comes to gases, right, we prefer to think about it as uh, in terms of per unit mole. So although this is not specific heat capacity, it is kind of similar. All right. So calculate to 3SF. Wow, strangely specific the amount of mole of the gas okay so we'll do that part first so to find the number of moles let me zoom out a bit i will need to collect or use the equation pv is equal to nrt since they say that the mass is fixed so there's no leakage there's no weird thing happening i can just uh, confidently plug in plug in the equation pv is equal to nrt all right, so I'm going to use the equation simply because um, you are asked to find the number of moles. So it will make sense to substitute that. And then I will rearrange my N. N will be equal to PV over RT. Substitute time. So let's check your pressure here. Okay, you can choose either something on the left or something on the right. So let's say I take everything on the left side. Lah. So the pressure here would be... Uh, 3.51 times 10 to the power of 5. The volume is 2.40 times 10 to the power of 3. But A, cm cube, we got to change this. Okay, so times 10 to the power of 3. Cm change to meter will be negative 2 power 3, negative 6. All right, divided by the uh, universal gas constant, 8.31 and the thermodynamic temperature 290 because that is given to you in the exam. Then you can check your calculator. Okay, this will give us a uh, 0.349558, okay, based on my calculator. So I'm just going to write it to 3SF and this will be 0 0.3495, 6. 
So I guess if you round this to 3SF, it will be 0 0.350. Okay, so you can put this as 0 0.350. That is part B. Okay, part 2, Roman letter 2. The thermal energy transfer during the change. Okay, let's go back to the question. Um, to find the thermal energy transfer, it says that I need 12.5 Joule for every mole by every Kelvin. Right? So I guess we multiply. Lo. We know that we have 0 0.35 mole and we know that the temperature change is 290K to 310K. Alright, so I'm just going to multiply like, instead of quoting an equation. So the amount of energy transfer or heat transfer, let's say I put Q, is 0 0.350 mole, okay, uh, increased by 310 minus 290 Kelvin, the change in temperature. And for every unit change of this, we will need 12.5 joules of energy. Alright, so... This is pretty straightforward enough. And we will now press our calculator. Okay, so my answer is 87.5. So they say 3SF4. So I better write 3SF, you don't go and write 88 la, as much as you like the number. Okay, for the change in gas in B, state the quantity of external work done. Alright, so if you go back to the question, we will notice you have this important phrase called constant volume. So if we recall, constant volume here means that there is no work done on the gas or by the gas. Okay, so recall what you learned before. There's no work done on or by the gas, which means, um, I guess, just put zero. And if you want a reason, um, we can say that there is uh, no work done. because the change in volume is zero. Change in internal energy and the direction of this change. All right, so basically increase or decrease. Uh. So if you think about the first law of thermodynamics, I can quote that the change in internal energy will be equal to the heat added plus work done on the gas. All right, so hopefully you have watched that video because when we want to change the internal energy, we can either add heat to the system or do work and compress the system. So in this case, your work done is a beautiful zero. And what is your heat added? Nah, nah, nah. This one, uh? Thermal energy transfer. So transfer into the gas. So this will be 87.5. This is your delta U. So this will be positive. You can put 87.5 Joule. And since this is positive, so this shows an increase in internal energy or increase in U. Lah. All right. So that's the question. This is uh, pretty straightforward. Just make sure that you remember that sometimes they will give you or they will throw you a wild curve so you read the question. Lah. Okay. And remember to convert your units. That's all for this example. ON19, paper 4.2. I will see you in the next one.